Hey folks, Preston Brent here with Trader User Group. This is another weekly financial roundup for trading week ending 5-16-2014. Before I get started in this quick uh, roundup, uh, you'll see on the screen here a URL link to a new special offer that we have running. You know I get a lot of requests, folks, that would like to come in and try us out on a monthly basis. Click on this link and it'll take you right to a spot where you can do that. And then I even, um, for added measure, uh, try us out for a month or two if you like what you see, which I believe you will. Uh, we, we're continuing to add to our membership base every single week, globally by the way. Um, uh, you'll see that I throw in a couple of uh, special offers and discount to um, uh, upgrade to our annual. But anyway, check it out. Uh, I think you'll like it. Now, why don't we jump into this week's update. Let's see where we're going here. Uh, you see what I have on the screen here. Again, I've shown this many, many times before, but it's very important. You can see starting right in that area there as we kicked off uh, 2013, 2012, 2013, we had a big run up, and we are still in this channel. Um, we've only had... A couple of my, and this is a daily chart, by the way. So, uh, just only uh, just a couple of days there, and a couple of days there, um, going back to 2012, just a few days where we violated this channel, uh, meaning we've closed outside the channel. We had a closing low outside the channel, and then a little bit of a follow through. But outside of that, these right here, we are really we didn't close during the day below the channel. So this is still a very very strong bullish move that we're in um, you can't say otherwise and you can see here this yellow line as I'm outlining it here is the 200 EMA and then of course this red line in here is still within the channel we hit it right at the beginning of 2013 or, or Q4 2012 uh, uh, <clears throat> right in the center there and the the red line now which is the 50 EMA is now touching the bottom of the channel so we are getting a little bit of weakness in this which we've talked about now each of these yellow dashed lines are key price levels that that I go through with our members every day in our chat room but um, let's let's zoom in and just kind of take a look at what's going on here just look at the strength of this channel it's really interesting I'm gonna blow this up and just kind of adjust the screen here so that you guys can see a little bit closer here you can see here on this channel as we go up here, uh, we've had, this is a bullish action right here. Not only did the upsloping um, southern part of the channel provide support, so did the 50 EMA, this yellow line right in this area here. That's the 50 EMA that we sat on. So, you know, it's provided very nice support for us. Now, we are sitting right at this level right here. The next key support to the upside is going to be 1887.50. Um, <clears throat> So that's just a very tight area for us. Um, if I were also to highlight a new high that we had, kind of an intraday, would be right there, 1898.50. So you'll know on the cash index we hit over 1900, but on the futures market we did not. We got up to 1898.50 and then we stopped. We came down hard. We touched the uh, southern part of this um, channel. Uh, which also happens to be right on the 50 EMA. <clears throat> As you can see, it held very nicely, which also happens to be 1860.50, which is a natural price level support that I have in here as well. We took out an interim price level support of 1867.50. This is where we're sitting right now. So we've got uh, a number of um, support levels for us um, if should we uh, sell back off. Uh, where we got the channel and then we got natural price level supports here and then of course we got this huge one right here in the e-minis at 1803.25 it's a very key pivot for us should that break we'll come down and test the uh, 200 EMA very quickly and by the way this is one of the few times that we've gone this long uh, being north of the 200 EMA I mean if, if if I were to like let's zoom back out here and you can just kind of see now these are the this is the futures market um, <clears throat> but as I zoom out here, the last time we touched the 200 EMA was back um, <clears throat> around December of 2012, uh, and then going into um, uh, 2013, you can see here, uh, or actually in 2012, uh, 
going in, this is where we really penetrated the 200 EMA. And if we step it out even further, you can see here, you know, we were having some hard times of it in the summer of 2012. And then all of a sudden, you can see these letters, the letter P's on here. These are key pivots that we hit. And then we started to form this upsloping channel back in November 15th, 2012. And we've been in it since. So, um... I do believe that we're running out of some energy here. Uh, everybody wants to know where the market's going to go uh, from here, of course. Uh, I think that uh, the market's always going to surprise you. Um, I had said be prepared to uh, break this uh, support level here. Come down and test this level right here. Uh, it seems like we had a nice little bounce here, but we're getting a negative um, uh, divergences in some of the markets. I said last week we had a tail of two markets. If you look at the E-minis here, you can see we we really are fairly consistent. We've been fairly tight here with our pattern. Um, we have a hard time every time we get up to the north up here. Uh, generally, sellers will step in and take us back down, but we really don't go too much further south in the 86 or 1840-650 and we have buyers come in. So we've got this dramatic pressure here squeezing the market um, and eventually this is going to give and nobody knows which way it's going to give. But as I said last week and it's still true this week, um, you've got to be able to follow some of the key markets. We've had a dramatic amount of asset rotation happen um, uh, really, it started in earnest in March. Uh, March was uh, when money just slowly, or actually quickly, started flowing out of um, higher beta, higher PE stocks, mid-cap, small-cap stocks, started flowing into uh, risk-off type investments <coughs> like um, the utility sector or high-dividend-paying sector, which is why the E-mini... Uh, S&P 500 futures and the Dow futures have kind of remained up here. If we look at the NASDAQ, <clears throat> of course, let me just get the NASDAQ on here. Let's see. Here we go. If we look at the NASDAQ, we had a hard push uh, going into close on Friday as well. But you can see we're trapped in this little area right here. So even NASDAQ, we were able to break this channel, um, this down sloping channel right here. Um, and we hit a hard pivot right there. This whole shaded area here is acting as dramatic support for us uh, with NASDAQ. And we're sitting right at this level right here. And we do not know, again, whether that is the direction we're going or this is the direction we're going. So the market is in a conundrum right now. Um, the, the, I've got a mixed signal on, bo on, all my, on the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the S&P 500. The daily bars are mixed. You can see the 200 EMA is in this uh, shaded area. We're slightly above the 50 EMA sitting right there. Both the 50 EMA and the 200 EMA are almost flat right now. Slightly curved up on the 50. But NASDAQ is having a hard time trying to get the energy to come back up to this level. So the key to us is the same as it was last week. We're wrapping up earnings right now, and, and I want everybody to pay attention to the Russell. Okay, This is going to be important. This chart looks completely different than all the other charts. You can see here with the Russell, um, it's a good news, bad news. The good news is... You know, these are the key. This is a support zone for us, um, and or it was a resistance zone over here, but then it, it quickly turned into a support zone. Um, and then we hit it again, and we bounced hard, and we moved right up. We are still south of the 200 EMA, which has turned flat. The 50 EMA has still got a hard vector towards the downside. You can see this regression channel has a very steep vector to the downside. So... I am looking for the Russell right now to hold this key level here, this key zone, which really runs from about 1775, I'm sorry, 1075 roughly up to 
about 1082 right in that zone area right there we want to hold if this breaks folks we're going for a ride and we're going to go down and we're going to see a thousand we're going to get our 15 to 20 percent 15 to 15 percent pullback possibly even more in the uh, the dow and the s p right now the dow and s p you know they're slugging it out up here they can't make any new highs but buyers are always stepping in meanwhile money's been coming out of the Russell as you can see here risk is off money is flowing into bonds money's flowing into utilities and you can see where we're sitting right now so now the question is where to from here watch the Russell we want to see follow through action this week going into the Russell you can see right here where we hit this solid support area and then we moved up like this and now we're sitting right at that area there which is just south of the 200 EMA which has pretty much got a flat vector um, and there's the 50 EMA right there so we've got some key areas that we need to take out one of them is 11 20 50 and then of course the 50 EMA so this is kinda where I want to see us go I at least want to see us escape this downward regression channel and take out the 50 EMA why because look at what we did right there with the 50 EMA sellers took over again at the 50 EMA sellers took over again so you know this is a classic downtrend I mean it could not be even more classic for those of you budding technologists uh, technical folks you can just see here lower lows lower highs all the way down and it's just you know running this channel what do we need to do we want to take out that right there that would be the first little hurdle that we want to take out um, a little bit of a pullback and then we want to take out that one right there we need we need to be able to take out these prior pivot highs which are lower than previous highs right I mean each each high that is being formed is lower than the previous pivot high so we want to be able to take it out we want to stop that uh, movement so that we slowly start a new channel in this direction that's what we need now as you guys know anytime you get in a channel transition uh, and that's what this would be right here we would transition right here from a downward channel to an upward channel you never get it exactly right but we do over time we will pick this up very quickly if we can take out that key high right there so right in this area here just south of 114110 is going to be a key number for us likewise this shaded area is going to be a key area for us now I didn't show you on NASDAQ I've seen some analysts talk about this and it is a valid pattern it's not a perfect pattern but it is a little bit valid you can see right here with the NASDAQ we've got this this kind of uh, look and feel right like this so we've got what looks like a little bit of a left shoulder a little bit of a head and then is this going to be a right shoulder pattern you don't know yet it's it's it, it's in this formation stage right it's in this formation stage and this is where we are right now but it's it's got the the look and feel of a potential head and shoulders and if it comes down and tests this area again then you're gonna say well shoot and it breaks we're gonna fall down here and then as I tell my members the way to calculate the uh, the distance um, of this pattern is to basically take that number and then extend it down here the height of the the, uh, the head and if you'll notice if you do that it puts us right down in that support area right there uh, this is NASDAQ right around 3040 down to 3000 that's the NASDAQ but now if we look at the Russell you'll see we don't quite have that pattern okay um, the Russell we've got a little bit of <clears throat> what seemed to be the start of a head and shoulders right it started to do it right there then we got right there and then what would have completed the pattern was this right there and then a fall down that would have been a little minor head and shoulders but we didn't get that so what did we get overall we got a little bit of a wider pattern um, and you know it one of these kind of things like this so we've got this um, this <laughs> looks like a C6 golden arches McDonald's sign and then all the way up here and then back down here again like that so it's a widening pattern where if I were to draw this line here and make it even more like that 
it looks like this all right and th these these kind of it, it's very typically the movement in this kind of pattern favors an upside break and taking us back up in this area here. This is not a head and shoulders pattern, uh, not like we got in NASDAQ. It does favor an upside movement. But if we do break, then you can say, well, gee, which, which uh, neckline do we use, right? Because there's plenty of them here. And you can't really just arbitrarily say, well, I'm going to use this neckline here, or I'm going to use that neckline there, or that one there, or this one here. You can't do it. Uh, not in this kind of pattern. So what we've got to do is we can step out and look at key support areas um, on the on the, the the Russell chart. One of them being right there, and another key pivot would be right there. So you can see right down around the 940 area, and then right around the thousand area. These are key pivots for us. If we go out to a weekly chart just to see if we can take some of that noise away, okay, and then let's stretch it out a little bit. And now that the noise is away, uh, now you're getting uh, the makings of a longer term potential head and shoulders. You can see that right there and this right there. All right. So that would be the left shoulder. This would be the head. But that would suggest we've got another long way to go right again these are weekly charts so this would put us out into the fall time should that give us a right shoulder pattern here uh, that would suggest near term we're moving up all right which would support what I just showed on the daily chart we're moving up um, and again it doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna form a right shoulder but it does suggest pattern wise that we're gonna move up in the short term all right. So anyway, that's what these patterns are suggesting. But pay attention to the Russell very closely. That's what we got to watch for. Uh, watch these patterns. Now we got a lot of other things that we're watching. We're looking at gold. We're looking at bonds. I've got a number of ratio charts that are helping us analyze the risk on, risk off trade, uh, utilities. Uh, a number of uh, the the risk off environment started right at the beginning of March right at the beginning of March. So um, what we want to see is some risk come back into the market. So we're going to be watching that very closely. Again, if you're not a member, I would encourage you to check this link out uh, uh, that's coming up on the screen here. And um, uh, take it, uh, check it out and then click on it. It'll allow you to get in for a monthly basis. And then if you like what you see, uh, then you can uh, sign up. Uh, very easily and I'll throw a discount in there for you. Otherwise, I will see our members tonight in our Sunday uh, Secret Trader session and in our chat room tomorrow morning. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'll uh, be in touch. Bye now.